Good morning. Good morning. I'm Russ Madison. I'm a member here at East Point First Mountain United Methodist Church. And I would like to thank Sister Bernita Waller for including me in this morning's worship program. Amen. So it is Sunday, October 29th. It's the 22nd Sunday after Pentecost, and it's also Pastor Appreciation Sunday. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, that's an idea that goes back to the time of Paul, who wrote that the wise elders who are appointed over us, who lead us well, are worthy of a double portion of honor. And so we look forward to celebrating and recognizing the pastor's service this morning. Uh, at this time, I want to uh, call you to our opening hymn, which will be number 367. Excuse me, 369, Blessed Assurance. If you look in your red hymn books and for 369, Blessed Assurance will be our hymn if you can join us in, in praising the Lord in song. remember, Lord, that as we look for you and as we call upon your name, 
that you are looking for us. Yeah. That you expect us to be in your midst and in your presence. And that you were not created to serve us, but we were created to serve you. Yeah. And dear Heavenly Father, we ask that we come into your presence this morning to praise the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And it is in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. It's that time for announcements. I know you're excited about it. <laughs> you may have missed Mondays, you may have missed Wednesdays, you may have missed Fridays, so no worries. We're here now with the announcements for this week. And I just want to highlight a few of them for you. Uh, one thing, uh, Veterans Day is coming up, so those of you who have served in any branch of the armed uh, forces, we are asking you to contact the church office. Give them a ring, let them know your name, what branch you served in, so that you can be recognized on, uh, on or before uh, November 11th. Uh, second thing, early voting is ongoing. This is a uh, location for early voting. I believe it's in the library. Yeah. And I know they've been there every time I come by there. I see cars in the parking lot and activity down there, which is great to see. So there's just a, basically a few more days left next week. And then if you don't do that, you've got to wait till Tuesday, the real election day. And then you'd have to vote at your actual polling place rather than advance voting, which you could vote uh, at, at any location with, within the county. Uh, third, the church anniversary is coming up. So we want to celebrate that. I believe Rosa Lloyd is, is chairing that endeavor. I'm sure she can use your help if you're looking for a way to serve. She can put you to use. And I'll just mention Bernita again, because if you're looking for a way to serve, I'm sure she can plug you in somewhere on a future program. <laughs> okay. uh, last point I want to make is, as you know, the, the time change is coming up in more ways than one. Because you've got falling back, which we'll do you know, next. Saturday night, late night, early Sunday morning. And then I believe we're going to a regular worship time of 11 a.m. So you really got to think, you know, next weekend before you show up here, you know, what time is it? And, you know, are you where you need to be, when you need to be there? So Amen. remember to do that. And the location is changing as well. So if you come in here, it's not going to be here. It's going to be in the sanctuary. So Amen. just keep walking. You, you know, if you haven't been down there, just keep going past the crossroads, and you'll you'll find you'll find it. Amen. Amen. All right. At this time, I'm going to hand it off to Mr. Eddie Thomas, who's got an also special role in this morning's program. Eddie. Come on, Eddie. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to uh, invite you guys to join me as we. Uh, to the vision statement is located on the front of your program. And we'll do it together. Yeah. To be to the, the light of Christ, Christ spiritually, spiritually, physically, and relationally in, in the city of East Point and beyond. beyond. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Okay, next we've got uh, six ways uh, of giving. Uh, offerings here at uh, East Point First Malibu, and I want to go over those uh, six ways. Uh, first of all, we have our website, which is www.epfmumc.org. Secondly, we have Text and Give. That number, phone number is 404 567 5052. Once again, the number is 404-567-5052. Also, you could uh, utilize your bank with reoccurring options. We have uh, an app that you can utilize. The name of the app is Vanco, V-A-N-C-O, Faith. Also, uh, you can give by utilizing the U.S. mail. Uh, our mailing address here is 2651 Church Street, East Point, Georgia, 30344. And also there's a, a mail slot drop-in. 
uh, drop off, should I say, that you can utilize. So those are the six ways that you could uh, make your offerings here at uh, East Point First Melville United Methodist Church. Okay, at this time, we'd like to uh, sort of open things up for offerings for those that you would, that would like to uh, give today while we're here. Okay, now us as we take care of that, then I'd like to ask you now to, uh, if you will, bow your head as we offer a prayer. Father, accept our tithes and offerings as a gift of worship to you. Multiply what we give for the effective growth of your kingdom. We give to you today as a response to your goodness to us. We ask that you receive our offerings and continue to supply all of our needs. These blessings we ask in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Next on the program, we have a selection from Melvin Harvey, saxophonist.
Amen. Um, good morning. And I'm so glad to be here today. Boy, this is a great day. Um, but let me inform you just a little housekeeping on the membership side. Miss Jackson, my mother, my mother-in-law, uh, is hospitalized. Uh, she is down at Piedmont Fed receiving uh, good care. Uh, I've been with my brother Ronson and we've been talking back and forth, making sure everything's fine and she's coming along. So uh, keep <clears throat> her and the family in your in your prayers, all right? Amen. All right, I have <clears throat> the honor of, I had triple duty today. Yeah. Uh, somebody must have told the pastor that I was like that bull in the stall. I needed some, <laughs> some work or something, man. <laughs> <laughs> But I am here today and I'm honored to be here on this day as I uh, introduce our speaker and do our uh, scriptures and the morning prayer. This is a great day as we honor yeah. You know, our, our pastors. Russ, that was great what you did given the history behind why we celebrate this day. Uh, certainly, uh, a man receiving, the, or woman receiving the call to minister, boy, I can, you know, I can just imagine it would be a lonely endeavor if you were not really called. <laughs> and this man is called to minister. And all honor and glory is yours. All right, so let me uh, let me introduce our speaker. Uh, you know, he's been here before, so I, I don't want to. Bert's been, Dr. Dr. Neal has been here before, so uh, for those of you that have the program at hand, his bio is in there. Um, you can look at it, but you know, this is noteworthy. I'm not going to read the whole thing, however. There's a pedigree here, <laughs> and it's very good. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your service, too, uh, keeping us all safe. He has a military background, so that's great. Uh, Reverend Dr. William Burke Neal III, uh, who retired in 2022 after serving multiple appointments in the North Georgia Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church, has had a diverse and fulfilled career. Burke Neal's journey in ministry, his professional life, and his current role with the, with, uh, the George United Methodist Foundation are highlighted uh, and in the provided article. You can read all that, but I'm gonna, let me do a little bit of this. Burke and his wife, Denise, celebrated 42 years of marriage. Amen. Yeah. Um, that's a great man. That longevity has its place. Yeah. Uh, they have a daughter named Tiffany who works as a human resource business partner for Target Corporation uh, and is a mother to their grandson, Isaiah. Their son, Bert, is a manager with wow. Zaxby's Restaurant. Hey! hey. All right. Hey, man. Yeah, we could go over to your house and have a party. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bert's uh, Neil served in the United States Army for 21 years, retiring at the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. Wow. Uh, professional career after his military service, he worked as Deputy uh, Executive Director for the Atlanta Housing Authority, 1994 19, uh, to 1998, and as a contract manager for the Georgia Department of Juvenile Justice, 1998 to 2000. And five. Bert's call to ministry involved, uh, evolved over time. He grew up in a Christian home, was actively involved in the church from a young age, and had a strong faith foundation. While in the Army and later attending Ben Hill United Methodist Church in Atlanta, he felt the clear call to full time ministry. This call led him to serve in various roles in different United Methodist churches, and he pursued his theological education, earning a Master's of Divinity and a Doctor of Ministry. All right. My friends, we have a dynamic speaker with a distinguished background. Amen. Dr. Neal, I welcome you here today. Thank you. Amen. Amen. I also have the honor today of uh, the scriptures 
which are from uh, 1 Thessalonians, the 5th chapter, 12th through the 13th verse. So let me give you a moment to find that. It always makes for a better understanding of the word if we fellowship through them together. Mm -hmm. So, uh, 1 Thessalonians, the 5th chapter, 12th through the 13th verse. If you will, please stand. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourself. Friends, 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, may the Lord add a rich and bountiful blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. You may be seated. This is that moment where we have open communications with God. Uh, I'm honored today to lead us in, uh, in prayer. I am sure that uh, when we open communications, there are special prayers and needs in your family and on your heart for your spouses, your children, your acquaintances. This is that time where we open communications. Let us pray. Pray together. Would you bow with me, please? Come, O Holy Spirit, heavenly dove, with all of thy quickening powers, kindle the flames of sacred love in these cold, cold hearts of ours. Dear Heavenly Father, you draw each of us to your heart Draw our pastor deeper into your love with an open heart to follow your will with increased wisdom and understanding. Give our pastor the stamina needed to continue serving, serving you, and to lead this congregation well. Yes. Strengthen him as a faithful under-shepherd of your care for us and keep him faithful and true to your word. Keep him grateful for the preaching of your word and your truth. For this is his fellowship of gospel. We thank him for the influence that he will have in our lives and in the community and for the examples he will set for Christian life. Now, Lord, he is not alone in this journey here on earth. We ask for a blessing for the, his family that also supports him. We support him, but he has a family also that needs the support so that he can do his job. Yes. We thank you for this man that has come under you, O oh Lord, to minister to us. Keep him strong, keep him faithful. These blessings we ask in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We have a selection, and then after the selection, uh, the next voice you will hear will be Reverend Dr. Dirk, Dr. W. Burt Neal. <laughs> Man, I ain't need to put you. <laughs>
church. Let him clap with praise. Amen. Come on, let's lift him up. Savior Jesus Christ, because there is only one name under heaven by which we can be saved, and that is the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Giving honor to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the guide, the teacher, the comforter, an ever-present help, not just in trouble, but at all times. And always want to give honor to my wife, Denise, flesh of my flesh and bone of my bone. <laughs> She knows, I, I call her the butter on my biscuit, the honey in my tea, and the pepperoni on my pizza. What pizza is not, it can't be good without some pepperoni. All right. Amen. Amen. It's good to be with you here. I want to give honor to you, East Point First, Malalu. I want to give honor to the angel of this house, your pastor, Reverend Dr. Michael Stinson, my friend. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity to, to come and bring the message on this pastor's appreciation. Sunday. He did this for me a few years ago when I was a pastor at Wesley Chapel. Um, we've been friends for a long time, and it's hard to say no to a friend. <laughs> Amen. I was uh, actually I was on I-85 going north to Greensboro, North Carolina, and I got this text message from my friend. <laughs> that was just Tuesday. <laughs> well, come on. And he said, uh, I'll be telling them, Bert. Bert, uh, would you mind bringing the word for me on Sunday? <laughs> now, it was Tuesday, <laughs> and I was on the road to North Carolina. My wife and I, I was headed to see my great aunt. I have an aunt who turned 103. Amen. 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 And, and I had not, I did not get to see her on her 102nd birthday because she had COVID. And uh, I am just amazed that she survived the COVID. Amen. At 102, that I could see her at 103. Amen. Amen. You know, the thing about it, if you look at the history books, you will see that when the coronavirus first came, she was born then too. All right. So she's had a chance to live a long and, and good life. Amen. It's nice to see that you are celebrating your, your pastor today. I can't tell you how much uh, it means to be a pastor and to be celebrated and appreciated, especially in the times that we're going through right now. All right. Um, so I'm, I'm glad to be here with you today. And, and I pray that you feel, Michael, that you feel the love of your congregation. As, as, because being a pastor, you need that. You need that. And so I want to kind of talk about a little bit of that today uh, in this, this message. I want to give honor and praise to those who diligently serve. I want to say thank you to the ushers and, and to the guys. Hey, y'all are bringing it. So don't <laughs> thank you. Thank you for 
for the music. Thank you for keeping the spirit in this house. I want to give the community, uh, the leadership team of this church and those who have set up hospitality to have a nice reception afterwards for this Appreciation Sunday. Um, Denise and I are always blessed when we come. This is my third time here. Um, the last two times we were here, I um, we had my mother-in-law with me. And so um, we celebrated her 92nd birthday last month. And so the birthday for my mother-in-law is the time of transition for when she leaves us and goes to see, stay with Denise's sister. So we keep her a year, and then on her birthday, her sister keeps her a year. And so we've been doing that for a while, and it is, it is a blessing to be able to, to be able, I hope somebody does that for me <laughs> when, when my time comes, but I doubt it. <laughs> so right now she's in Arizona for this season and, and we are glad to, to, to be able to celebrate her 92nd birthday and we just pray that when it comes time for her 93rd, we will go to Arizona, we will scarf her up and bring her back to Atlanta. Amen. 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 Come on, let us pray together. Almost gracious and loving God, we, we, we come now to, as your children, to hear a word from you we strive to better understand how to represent you in this world. Lord, we love you and, and are truly grateful for all you've already done for us. You know everything there is to know about us because you created us. We can't tell you anything that, that will surprise you about ourselves or the world we live in. We simply pray for you to intervene in every situation whether it be in Ukraine, whether it be in Israel, whether it be around the corner from our homes, that you would come and intervene on behalf of your children. Fill us each day with more of you and less of ourselves. Bind us to your will and to your way and loose from us those things that challenge our relationship with you. We thank you for this word today and the opportunity to show appreciation to the one you have assigned to this place to lead your children. We thank you for the gift of your presence right now, right here. Yes. We want you to be the center, God. Yes. Send your Holy Spirit to confront us, to challenge us, to, to change us, to be better for you and for each other. Turn our stumbling blocks into stepping stones. Yes so that we might be more like Jesus. <clears throat> Bless our families with more peace and less drama. Bless this church with an abundance of love as it serves the community. And bless the pastor. Help him to hear you as he prays, leads, and loves on your children. Hello. Come now, Daddy. Abba. Yeah. Yahweh. Thank you. Jehovah. Use me for your glory. Let your word transform someone's life today for you. In this moment, my desire is to be used by you. Hide me behind the cross of our salvation. Let the people see you, feel you, and hear you through me. Stand up in my body, think with my mind, and speak with my tongue. Yeah. For you alone are to be glorified. And all the children of God said amen. 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 Amen, amen again. Amen. Now, come on, let's give God another hand clap of praise. Come on. Now, I must confess, Michael, that this is the first time that I've ever preached a pastor's appreciation. Oh, wow. Amen. I've never done it before. Because I've always been on the receiving end. Amen. But I've never preached a pastor's appreciation sermon before. When I when I got your text message and I was sitting with Denise in the car, it was her turn to drive. We kind of switch and go to North Carolina. This is about a six hour ride. So she'll I'll do two, she'll do two, and then I'll do two and take us home. And so I was thinking about how how do I do this? I didn't want to just come and just preach a sermon. I wanted to preach a pastor's appreciation sermon. All right. Well <clears throat> So, I, I, so, so just hear me and, and, and indulge me for a little while. I have come to understand that you don't have to teach people to complain. All right. <laughs> well. You don't have to teach people to criticize well. mm -hmm. and to be selfish. We're naturals at that. All right. Yeah. 
But but you but we do have to learn to express appreciation. Amen. All right. People need to be appreciation appreciated. The person who who waits on you at the restaurant, the the person who delivers your mail, <laughs> who picks up your trash, who mows your grass, who teaches your children, who cooks your food, and your pastor need to be appreciated. A businessman went downtown to his office one morning a couple hours earlier than usual. He had some, some things he wanted to do before the employees came to work. No one was there in the office when he arrived except old Tom, the custodian. Old Tom was a faithful employee of many years of service to the company. And when the boss walked in to his office, there was Tom emptying the trash cans, dusting the furniture, and tidying up the place. When the boss noticed him going around his routine, he said, he said, Tom, you know, as I look around this place, I can't help thinking what an asset you have been to our organization for all these years. You have kept this place clean and cheerful for our employees and and our customers to enjoy. Tom, he, he said, you are an important member of this organization, and I want you to know that I appreciate you and all that you have done. All right. And old Tom said, thank you, boss. He walked out of the room with his dust cloth in his hand. A few minutes had passed, and the boss had settled behind his desk to do a little work, and the door opened. And in came Tom. His eyes were moist. There was a tear on his cheek. The boss could not understand. He said, uh, what is wrong, Tom? Did I say something to offend you? Tom said, no, sir, you, you didn't offend me, but I have something I want to tell you. Boss, he said, you know, I have worked right here in this place for 17 years. 12 of those years I have worked for you. And this morning is the first time anyone ever told me they appreciated anything I do. Well, mm. our scripture this morning, and Larry has read it for you, but I'm, I want to read it again. But I want to read it from the common English version of the Bible. Uh, I, I like the way the common English of the Bible kind of gives us scriptures because I like the way that it includes women as well as men in the scriptures. Amen? Amen. So here are these words. Brothers and sisters, we ask you to respect those who are working with you, leading you, and instructing you. Think of them highly with love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. For a message title, I want to use simply this. Celebrate the shepherd. Amen. Somebody say that with me. Celebrate, Celebrate the shepherd. Don't oh, say it like you mean it. Celebrate the shepherd. What is the biblical concept related to the pastor? Because of the times in which we live in, we need to see the ministry of the pastor from the Bible's perspective. Amen. Many of God's people have a wrong concept towards the pastor. They give him the title of employee of the church. All no, right. he isn't an employee. Others give him the title of team manager because we think we should work as a team. But no, he is not the team manager. Others want to call him a CEO. Others, well, we won't mention what they want to call him. <laughs> if he's not all of those things, who is the pastor? Well, he wears a lot of hats. Husband, son, father figure to Sintera. He's an electrician. He knows how to work social media. <laughs> He's a custodian, All right. administrator, strategic planner, chaplain, plumber, mentor, and so much more. But really, the Bible's understanding of the role of pastor comes down to one word, one concept. 
shepherd. Yes. All right. Shepherd. He is a God called anointed person who is charged with feeding, protecting, leading, and admonishing the sheep under his care. Mm -hmm. Sometimes pastors are the loneliest person in the church. Ask me, I can tell you. Often their hours are long, the pay at a minimum, and the criticism at a maximum. Feelings of disappointment, <laughs> discouragement, and defeat may plague the best of them. I know that you appreciate your pastor, and that's why you're having this Sunday of recognition. Mm -hmm. And you may ask yourself this question. What can I do for my pastor? All right. What can I do? Well, I want to give you a few things, and then I want to tell you a few things from Scripture that may help you understand it. Mm. Here's, here's some things that every believer can and should do for their pastor. First off, know him. All right. Do you really know Reverend Dr. Michael Stinson? Mm. Acknowledge the fact that he is unique. His style, his personality, his gifts, his character, traits are unique to him. Let him be who he is. Throw away the measuring stick, your way of evaluating the pastor. The best way to know a person is to sit across the table All right. from them. Second, esteem him very highly. That's what Paul tells us to do in our scripture this morning. Always speak honorably and respectfully of the pastor. He deserves your highest and best opinion. He is the messenger of God to your soul. He is your shepherd and your teacher. Third, remember him. Remember him at the throne of grace. It has been said that after a pastor has been in a church for some time, the church takes on a bit of his style and his personality, and that may be true. But I believe that a church can, through its praying, All right. make a lasting imprint on his soul. Yes. Pray for him that he will be anointed in his preaching, that he will be humble and patient and full of faith and joy and peace. Pray that God will constantly renew his passion for Christ, his church and the unsaved. And then follow him. Follow his devotion, his doctrine, his dependability as he shows you the way of faith by word and example. A leader is not a leader if no one is following. All right. Fifth, use your skills to bless him. He can't do all the work by himself. All right. He needs your help. Who calls a pastor at 8 o'clock in the morning and tells them, I'm not going to be at church to run the video today? <laughs> there are some things that, that you can do well that either he can't do or doesn't have the time to do. Now, this next one is really, really important. Squelch gossip. All right. Oh, I, I, it got quiet. Just <laughs> Squelch gossip. If you hear a negative comment, respond with a positive one. If misinformation is being spread, correct it with the accurate information. And know this, sometimes being silent or just walking away speaks volumes yeah, of yeah. negativity. Yeah. And then praise him. Express appreciation from time to time in writing. Put them in what I call a praise box. Michael, you need a praise box. All right. Put, put, put the expressions of appreciation in the praise box so he can dip into it on gloomy days and lift up his spirit. Really, the preacher is no different than you or I. Right. The more you praise him, the harder he'll work. And finally, remember his first priority. Mm. Family. Like any other Christian man, he is first provider, protector, and priest to his family. Don't let the church seduce him to the point that it leaves a bad taste in their mouth My Lord. and creates friction at home. Mm -hmm. All right. The pastor is just like you. Right. Another experiment in grace, a fellow witness to the truth, a, a flesh and blood testimony to the goodness of God. Yeah. He has soup stains on his shirt. Raising nicks on his chin, mm -hmm. dirt on his shoes, 
a song on his lips, and a joy of Jesus in his heart. Yeah. All right. He lives in the shadow of the cross, wants to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. He, he strives to be a man of his word. Amen. He is a purveyor of hope, a merchant of mercy, an advocate of agape love, a fan of faith, and a sharer of good news. He wants yeah. to be better than he is. Yeah. And he wants others to be better than they are. Yeah. He wants to reproduce Jesus in his life and help others do the same. He wants us to live beyond human capabilities. And he wants us to be fueled by the Holy Spirit. Yes. Celebrate the shepherd. Now, when you ask for the name of a great apostle in the scriptures, the two names that most easily come to mind are the apostle Paul and the apostle Peter. Mm -hmm. But one apostle that plays a critical role in the New Testament is the apostle Barnabas. All right. Barnabas' name means son of encouragement. Yeah. And when the apostle Paul was first starting out in his ministry, he became very discouraged. Before Paul became a Christian, he had a reputation of arresting Christians. You know the story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Putting yes. them in jail and voting in favor of them being put to death. Yes. Well... Christians were terrified of Paul. When, when Paul became a Christian, many believers thought he was putting on an act. They, 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 they felt he simply wanted to get their names, find out where they lived, and, and then lock them up. Paul was very discouraged after becoming a Christian because the people he used to hang with hated him as a traitor, and the people he wanted to hang with all thought he was a phony. Well, come on now. Now, along comes the Apostle Barnabas, whom God sends as an encourager to Paul. Yeah. He embraced Paul when no, uh, nobody else would. When the, when the Christians were terrified, Barnabas comes with words of encouragement to remove their fears. His encouragement led them to accepting Paul and the possibility of an increase in ministry for the Lord. Wow. Barnabas' original name was Joseph. Mm-hmm. But when the church had a financial need, he went and sold the field that he had and brought the money to the apostles and laid it at their feet to be used for others. Mm. From that moment of personal sacrifice on his behalf, Joseph became Barnabas, yeah. son of encouragement. Tell it, tell it. When Paul was journeying through the rough area of Pamphylia, wondering if it could get much worse in terms of travel and living conditions, Barnabas was there by his side. Yeah. When Paul was run out of Bethsaida, they had to run Barnabas out too because he was preaching just as boldly as Paul was. Well, mm -hmm. He was there to encourage Paul when they were chased out of Iconium. They both were targets of an assassination plot for preaching. When Paul was stoned in Lystra, Barnabas was there to encourage him to help him get back up. It was Paul and Barnabas together who mm -hmm. encouraged the new disciples to remain true to the faith. Everybody that is involved in ministry, hear me, my friends, needs a Barnabas. Yeah. We need a Barnabas in our lives to, to keep us going in times of difficulty and to keep us laughing when things aren't going well. Well, right, yeah. <clears throat> the story is told of an elderly saint who did not hear too well. She did not see too well, but she came to church almost every Sunday, regardless of the weather. It wasn't that she expected to hear a dynamic message each Sunday. She was overheard telling another member this. We come to church so as to encourage the minister. Nothing encourages the pastor like your presence. All right. <clears throat> when you show up for worship, mm -hmm. and hear me online, <laughs> oh, I, I know I'm telling the truth. That yeah. we, 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 I, I know I am. We've gotten to a place in, uh, in our society that it's become comfortable right. yeah. to sit at home right. Yeah. and not come to church. Right. Well, well. Let us not forsake assembling together with each other. That's Amen. what the Bible says. That's right. We should be right here. Nothing encourages the pastor like your presence for Bible study or choir rehearsal or Sunday school or the church events. It encourages your pastor. 
Celebrate. That's my first point for you today. Celebrate your shepherd with encouragement. Be a Barnabas to your pastor. In 1 Samuel, the 25th chapter, we read about David going through a very difficult period in his life. King Saul was after him to put him to death, and David had gotten an army of about 600 men to follow him. David had to find a way to keep these men fed, so as they were traveling, they came to an area <clears throat> called Moam. A man by the name of Nabal lived there, and he was very wealthy with 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats. And David's army could have gone in and taken whatever they wanted from the shepherds. Some of the men probably wanted to do that, but David insisted on a different approach. Since raiding bands would come and often steal from the large herds, David put his men in position so that others were afraid to attack Nepal's flocks. Well, <clears throat> Wild animals would often sneak in and grab an animal or two and run for it, but not while David's men were there with the flock. It's hard to calculate the amount of money that Nabal saved by having this free protection. Well. Or the amount of money saved because there was no <clears throat> loss of livestock. Come on. Then came the time for shearing the animals for the wool so that money could be made. It was a time of rejoicing and celebration for the workers. David sent a few of his men to Mr. Nabal, making him aware of what he and his men had done. And Nabal was told that all the time that we were with your shepherds, we never mistreated them, we made sure nobody harmed them, and if you count your animals, you'll see that not a single one of them is missing. All right. So whatever you think our labor was worth to you, please send it by these men. <laughs> Mr. Nabal's response was, I don't know who you are. Come on. <clears throat> I didn't ask you to do it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to give you a dime. Well. So quit wasting my time. <laughs> Have you ever in your life gone out of your way to do something for someone mm. and hope they would show a little appreciation well. for what you have done? Only to hear the same kind of thing like Mr. Nabal, I did not ask you for it and I do not owe you anything. Well, Nabal, like many people today, suffered from what I call a severe case of non-appreciitis. <laughs> It's a disease that hits you when you fail to appreciate what others have done right. on your behalf mm -hmm. or whether you requested it or not. Right. Read the book. Read the Bible. Within 24 hours, this man who thought he had it all together had a massive heart attack and died within 10 days. Read the Bible. I didn't make it up. Well. Non-appreciatiatus had killed him. Well. Some of us have lost some great opportunities in life because we allowed others to be inflicted with the disease of non-appreciitis. Perhaps you suffer from this disease. Well, but I want you to know there is no vaccine for it. My Lord. <laughs> the cure is appreciation. All right. Yes. And encouragement. Yes. Yes. Come on, son. So my second point for you this morning is this. Appreciate your shepherd by serving without being asked. All right. Mm -hmm. Come on. You would be surprised at the kinds of things that can be done around a church mm -hmm. if you would just show up Amen. and do them Amen. without being asked. That's right. Pastor, where is the broom closet? <laughs> I want to sweep off the front stoop. Mm -hmm. I want to mop the kitchen. Show me a bucket and a pail. I, I just want to go in and tidy up the bathrooms, and, and then I'm leaving. All right. You'd be surprised how much work could be accomplished in the church Amen. if you would celebrate your shepherd by serving without being asked. Why is it that we feel like we got to wait until somebody asks us to come on? Come on. Do you need an invitation? then I invite you today to sh celebrate your shepherd without being asked to do something in the life of the church. All right. <clears throat> Jesus ran into the same problem 
similar problem is found in Luke chapter 17. There is Jesus minding his own business as he went into a village. A group of 10 men with the disease of leprosy started well. yelling at him from a distance. Because of their disease, they were kept in isolation from everybody else. The only friends they had were each other. They wanted to be healed, and they knew Jesus was their only hope. They started yelling, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Well, well. And Jesus looked at them with tremendous compassion in his heart. He said to them, go show yourselves to the priest. You know the story. You read the story. And as they went, the ugly sores on their bodies began to heal. The twisted hands began to be straightened out. The blotches of skin color began to change. And they started looking like everybody else. Mm -hmm. They began to scream and yell and give each other high fives. They, they began to think of all the things they wanted to do. They ran to the priest to get the stamp of approval to get back into the community. All of them did except for... One, the one remembered what his life had been and that somebody had come along and made a difference. Amen. That somebody was Jesus Christ. Yeah. And before he could think of how he was going to enjoy himself and all the things he was going to do and the, the clothes he was going to buy and the, and the things he was going to eat, he had to find the one who made it possible. Well, he went back to Jesus. And this time, instead of yelling at a distance, he fell right at Jesus' feet and thanked him. Yeah. And Jesus says, something, something is wrong here. Mm -hmm. Were there not 10 people healed? Well. Where are the other nine? Come on now. Did the others so quickly forget to return and praise God except for this foreigner? Well. You see, the one who came back to praise God was a Samaritan. Mm -hmm. The one who came back to say thanks was supposedly the one who didn't even know God. Well, well. This man's heart was filled with appreciation. Saints, have you ever been so grateful for a gift that you forgot about the giver? Well, well. Learning to appreciate what God has done for us and what others do for us is a major step towards being made well, towards being made whole, body, mind, and spirit. Yeah. When members in our family show appreciation for what we have done, it makes us want to do even more. Mm -hmm. When our supervisors show, show appreciation for work we do, it makes us want to be better at what we do. Yeah. When we show appreciation to God for what the Lord has done, I believe God is pleased. Yeah. Yeah. So celebrate your shepherd with encouragement. Celebrate your shepherd by serving and celebrate your shepherd with thanks and gratitude. Yes. Richard Robert Brault said this. He said, enjoy and appreciate the little things for one day you may look back and realize they are the big things. Mm -hmm. So thank you for the phone call. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for the text message. Yeah. Thank you for the card. Yeah. Thank you for the visit. Yeah. Thank you for taking time out to listen to me. Yeah. 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 You know, it's easy to appreciate your pastor when you have a good one. One who never preaches a bad sermon. <laughs> one who is always there when you need him. One whose administrative skills are second to none. The story is told about a time when a group of people came from a neighboring church to see a wise, retired pastor. All right. They were looking for some advice on, <clears throat> on some convenient and painless way to get rid of their pastor. Well. So he thought about it, and he decided that he would smile, and with a little sarcasm, he would give them some things to think about to get rid of their pastor mm -hmm. in a painless and convenient way. Well, he said, I, I tell you, <laughs> if you want to get rid of your pastor, look at the pastor straight in the eye while he's preaching and say amen. All right. <laughs> Once in a while, he preach himself to death and then you'll be rid of him. <laughs> And then he said, oh, or you could pat him on the back and brag 
him his good points and he'll probably work himself to death. <laughs> and you'll be rid of it. <laughs> or perhaps maybe you could rededicate your life to Christ and ask the pastor for some job to do, preferably some lost person you could win to Christ and your pastor will probably die of a heart attack. <laughs> And you'll be rid of it. <laughs> or maybe you could get the church to unite in prayer for the pastor, and he'll soon become so effective that the conference will take him off your hand. Well. And move him to a larger church. Well. My friends, the congregation makes the pastor as much or more than the pastor makes the congregation. Amen. When a congregation appreciates their pastor, he becomes a great pastor. However, when a congregation does not appreciate their pastor, he is at best an average pastor. Well, let me say that a different way. Do a great job of showing your appreciation to Michael and Patricia. Overwhelm them with your expressions of love so much so that they don't want to give you anything less than their best. Well, yeah. And if there's anything great about this preacher, it's not because of who he is mm -hmm. and what he does. It's because of who you are and what you do Amen. to encourage, appreciate, and love on him along mm -hmm. the way. You know, I have learned that people will forget what you said. Right. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. My Lord. One of the most powerful ways to love and honor your pastor is through prayer. Yes. When yes. you go to your altar, when you go to your special place in your home, when you take time out for your personal devotion time, plead with God on behalf of your pastor. Yes. Asking the Lord to preserve the pastor's relationships, his reputation, and his integrity. Recognize that your shepherd is under constant attack from the enemy. And your prayers can provide him with strength and protection. Pray for his clear conscience, his honorable actions and restoration. By lifting up your pastor in prayer, you contribute to his effectiveness and the overall health of the church. <clears throat> the responsibility of the shepherd is to help people to see the hand of God in their lives. The ministry of the shepherd is the word to encourage people to look more carefully until they see that in their lives there are reasons to celebrate. So come on, church. Mm. Let's celebrate today. Come on. Let's celebrate the shepherd today. Open your eyes and look at all that the Lord has already done for yes. us. Yes. Celebrate the blessings that are yours in this present moment. Celebrate the Lordship of Jesus Christ in your life. Celebrate that every day with Jesus is sweeter yes. than the day before. Yes. Yes. yes, yeah. And let's celebrate the shepherd that God has put in your midst for such a time as this. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 pray together and then I believe we'll go right into an invitation to Christ. Oh, most gracious and loving God we give you glory and honor and praise for the gift of your presence through the shepherd of this church. You are omnipotent and omnipresent and have provided for us in ways that we do not deserve and that we cannot fully understand. We are grateful now we add our voices to the voices around the throne of heaven this morning saying hallelujah, 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 hallelujah to your holy name. Amen. Lord, we strive to embrace your presence in our lives and give you thanks for the shepherd you have placed here. Help us to encourage him and appreciate him as we strive to seek your heart. Yes. God, we know from the example of David to do right when we can. We know from the example of Barnabas to encourage others in our presence. Yeah. And we know from the example of Nabal to avoid the dreaded disease of non-appreciation. And we know from the example of the leper 
to give thanks. Lord, you know everything there is to know about us, and you still accept us and love us. God, you are with us through every situation and every trial, protecting and guiding and loving us. And as we strive to celebrate you every day, we magnify you. We bless you. We adore you, Lord. We exalt your holy name. And all the children of God said, Amen. 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 And amen again. Why don't you stay on your feet when we open the doors to the church? We want to offer Christ to anyone today who does not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of their life. Why don't you come and know that He will give you brand new life, new life abundantly? So come. If you have not made Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior, we want to give you that opportunity to do that today. If you're online watching and you have some questions, call the church. Talk to the pastor. How many people in here already know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of their life? I would assume that all hands went up because you're here today. But you know the question I often ask people, you may know, you say you know Jesus Christ as Savior, but do you know him as Lord? Well, the one who guides your life, who holds you accountable. The doors are open. Is there anyone that would want to come today? Won't you please come? And then the, the second question is there may be someone here today who says they know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, but you've gotten off the path. Well, you've gotten away. You been distracted, you've gotten away from what you know is right and true, and you want to get back on that path again. So I invite you to come. If you want to come, I, I'm here to pray with you and for you. Is there anyone today that wants to come? Won't you please come? Hey. Yeah. 
myth, the legend. <laughs> Reverend Dr. Michael Stenson, my brother. <laughs> Give God any kind of praise for the message of the messenger. As most of you know, I had the month of August off where I was taking care of myself <laughs> so that I could come back to take care of the church. And during that time, Bert preached twice for me. And uh, I watched online. Let me just say, you better in person than you're online. <laughs> <laughs> We've been friends, uh, actually, since seminary. Uh, I think I met him in 2004, or two, yeah, 2004. He graduated in 2005, I graduated in 2006. I started school in 2003, but I was never on campus. I was working full-time and going to school full-time, so I didn't spend a lot of time around campus and stuff in class. But when I met him, his spirit touched me, and uh, I knew he was something special. Uh, and so a friend of mine that I've known for 40 plus years now, named Lavelle Sanders and I were prayer partners and we prayed every every day, every 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 week on Tuesday. And I was in Tennessee at uh, National Black Conference. And uh, I, I call up Lavelle and say, you know, this guy Bird, that's not about him. We need to add him to our group. And Lavelle said, yeah, there's something about him, yeah, we need to add. Mm -hmm. And so we've been prayer partners for Amen. 15 years at least, you know, as we do this thing of ministry, because it's not easy, y'all. Yeah. It is not easy. Well. What a wonderful day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Yeah, come on, give a house praise for that. Glad to see uh, two other pastors have joined us today, Reverend Dr. Darjane Patterson, pastor of two churches in South Georgia. And her husband, Reverend Patterson. And her husband, Reverend Andre Patterson. Who I call Reverend Who. <laughs> and I woke up this morning and I had an attitude of gratitude. Yes. That is not unusual. I wake up every morning with an attitude of gratitude. But today was something special. Yes. You see, yesterday morning I started out by running four miles with a group of about 20 or 30 friends. And in 65, a lot of folk can't run. And then I went to a celebration, a hundred year old, a, hundred, a celebration for a hundred years of life for a good friend. Amen. Then I went to Morehouse homecoming. <clears throat> no, I didn't go to Morehouse, but I'm from Atlanta, <laughs> and I know a lot of folks that went to Morehouse, and my nephew went to Morehouse. And then I went to Georgia Tech's homecoming football game. No, I didn't go to Georgia Tech, but both my brothers went to Georgia Tech. And one of my nephews, well, he's not blood nephew, but I've known his mom for 60 years, so he's my nephew, plays football for Georgia Tech. Right. And he had an awesome game. And I woke up this morning, I also had a little sadness. A friend of mine, who lived two doors down from me, who was nine days younger than me, was found dead in his house this past Monday. And on this Wednesday, I'll be doing his eulogy. And I was grateful because I'm still here. Yes, yes, yes. And I'm grateful because I get to serve EPFM Mm -hmm. For such a time as this. Y'all yes, yes, yes. don't realize what's going on at this church right now. This church is moving and we're turning the corner to what God has called us to do. Mm -hmm. We have some challenges, yes, but we're turning the corner financially in other ways. We're selling property that actually going to, to sell one of our parsonages on tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Going to closing. So we can use that money to better facilitate, to help our facilities so we can reach others for Christ. Mm -hmm. That's our ministry, is to reach others for Jesus Christ. That's right. That's right. And I'm grateful to be here and to serve with you for such a time as this. Amen. Now I know that 
Reverend Dr. Neil had already thanked the folks for helped us on program, but I want to say a special thanks as well for Antonio and for Melton for their music. Yeah. As I was sitting there, I realized how blessed I am with this church for the people we have. Yes. You know, uh, Larry, who read the scripture and did your introduction, a uh, uh, former fire chief of Fulton County. The guy who read uh, the EPFM Vision, Eddie Thomas, a fast Eddie, uh, a uh, radio hall of famer. Amen. And of course, Russ. Amen. That powerful prayer Amen. to get us started. Amen. But see, he also is our treasure and he keeps us straight. Amen. I can't tell you how many times he sends stuff back to me and say, but Pastor. <laughs> He makes sure we stay on point. I'm so grateful for you. I'm grateful for Waverly, who makes our sound straight. Amen. I'm thankful for the ushers. I'm thankful for Benito Waller, who every Sunday makes sure that we have our stuff together. Wow. I'm thankful for the leadership team for putting this together. This pastor's appreciation. You want to know what they do? A well, letter's going to come out in an email tomorrow. Let you know all the stuff they have done in the last year. You think we've been sitting around and doing nothing? No. The leadership board of this church has been working very, very hard for you and for Christ. And so a letter's going to come out tomorrow on email. And there'll also be one going out in snail mail to let other folks know what is happening here and what, this, what we are doing at EPFM. So give God some praise for your leadership team. <laughs> Brother, what you know, I did take notes. <laughs> Celebrate your shepherd by knowing him. <laughs> Esteem him highly. Yes. Remember him in prayer. Follow him. Bless him. Squelch gossip. Yes. Praise him. Remember that his family is his first priority. My Lord. I think we need to send that out tomorrow, too. <laughs> but thank you, my brother, for all that you do for the kingdom, for all that you've done for the kingdom. And thank you, Denise, his lovely bride of 42 years, for allowing me here. Now, you mentioned the Barnabas. I got a Barnabas. I know you do. Her name is Patricia. That's right. She's my encourager. She's the one who supports me and makes sure that I'm great and everything move forward. And I just want to say today, thank you. Because I wouldn't be the person I am or the pastor that I am if it had not been for your support. That's right. And then, of course, I got to thank mommy. That's right. 91 years old. Amen. Amen. And the blessing to wake up and have her in my house every morning. Amen. Amen. Come on, Don, you get ready to do something? I'm going to sit down. I'm going to stop talking now. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to say, uh, first of all, I want to uh, thank uh, Reverend Stenson for the years that he's been with us uh, here at East Point First Malibu. And, and, and to all of our members, wherever you may be, that, that God called us to be faithful. You know, and uh, I had a conversation with someone about I asked them, are you a Christian? Mm -hmm. And they said they were. And, uh, and I, I said, okay, um, um, there are certain things that Christians are identified by being, you know, that we are we, we're the body of Christ. And uh, we, we're scattered all over the world, but sometimes we have to come together in this place mm -hmm. to be together. And, and so, uh, I don't like to chastise people. I don't want to embarrass people, but you need to be here. All right. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's nice to be online if you are online, but it's also nice to be in the house of the Lord. Yeah. 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 We, we sometimes find ourselves caught up in our own selves sometimes yeah. about what I want and what I need. But let's look at the body. We need to be a part of the body. The, yeah. The body cannot function without the kit, you know. <laughs> it can't function without the heart, and you are the heart right. of this body. So, right. 
please uh, come and let's make this place the greatest place that it can be That's on right. this corner, in this place, in this city. Uh, we recite the, the vision statement. It means a lot more than you really think, if you think about it. All right. We are the light of Christ, spiritually, physically, and relationally in the city of East Point and beyond. Right. It's beyond your bedroom. It's, it's beyond your house. Yeah. It's throughout the world. Yeah. And we have to come together. And I'll say this to you, really, no pastor or any one person is the church. Right. You know, we are the church. That's right. The church together. That's right. That's right. But uh, at, at this time, after the, uh, the people in the back get themselves together, we'll, we'll, we'll determine how we're going to handle this thing. But we have refreshments in the back, and, um, and we're going to have a presentation uh, during our ceremony. Uh, here, and uh, I'll think about singing a song too later, but uh, we're gonna get into that later. But, but <laughs> Reverend, that's all I really want to say today, and uh, just to say thank you for the time that you've been with us this time. Amen. And, and I want to thank our speaker for the day, yeah. uh, because he he does bring the word, and I told him he told us all about ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, he told us one day he was hot, <laughs> <laughs> and we were too. <laughs> yeah, so, that's right. So anyway, but I just want to say thank you again, and, uh, and, and, and we, after we have our reception today, we're going to uh, honor you guys. So, thank you. <laughs> Come on, stand with me as we have a benediction to receive, and then depart from this place. Just know that I'm I'm blessed to be here with you today. I'm glad to be here to celebrate your shepherd, uh, my friend, and I pray that you've heard something today that you will, you will put into your heart to encourage you, to celebrate him, uh, and to not die from that dreaded disease, non-appreciitis. Amen. Amen. Would you lift up holy hands with me? And now to him who is able, stumbling to keep you from making a fool of yourself and present you with great joy and excitement to God who alone is wise be all glory and honor dominion and power to his name be at peace go in peace and celebrate Where you are, we just want to lift up a blessing over uh, over the food that we're about to receive. 